sparked civil unrest in Soweto and neighboring townships. There are claims that the youth was the primary instigator stealing from uh, the shops. Uh, what has followed is violence and looting against shops owned by foreign nationals. Yesterday, Deputy Minister in the Presidency, Buti Manamela, spent time uh, promoting tolerance, and he joins us now to discuss this issue more. Thank you very much, Minister. Thanks very much for joining us on the program. Uh, you gave a talk in Rayma in Soweto yesterday. What were those key messages you wanted to, to, to deliver to the youth there? Look, I think the important thing which we said to the young people at Rema and uh, young people around uh, Soweto was that they need to speak out against, uh, you know, what happened last week and that no one should do all of that in their name. And I think the majority of the youth leaders who were there, uh, you know, joined in that, uh, you know, what happened last week is not representative of what, uh, you know, the youth of, uh, uh, you know, Soweto represent, but also to encourage them to take advantage of government opportunities you know one of the things which uh, uh, you know has been said is that it's uh, you know young people who are unemployed who are not in school and all of that who did all of these things but I, I in in my view and also in my interaction with the people I spoke to yesterday it was just pure criminality it's mm -hmm. not xenophobic attack or anything of the sort uh, but also uh, you know criminality which can be characterized as uh, uh, you know afro uh, phobic, uh, targeting African, uh, you know, uh, uh, nationals. But I think the important thing is that you, you can't say that uh, it's because of unemployment and all of that. When you see a 14, 15 year old going to uh, loot, and I think sometimes very despicably with uh, their parents, someone who's supposed to be in school, yeah. who their parents are supposed to be taking, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, to school. And we also said to uh, parents, they need to take parenting back into their hands. We, we can't be raising our hands in uh, despair and in defeat that the youth have, uh, uh, you know, defeated us, they've gone into rampage and all of that. So essentially, Let's get young people into education. Let's fight, uh, you know, the scourge of drug and alcohol abuse, which is one of the things that led to, uh, you know, the, the, the unrest. And let's allow police to do their work, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we believe there is a crime. Mob justice will not take us anywhere. Yeah. Uh, yesterday speaking, um, uh, addressing the crowds, you actually went on to say that um, if you see a young child that should be in school yeah. uh, standing in the streets, you should actually give them a hiding before you take them to school because because that is where they belong. Um, th this, I think, is, is at the root of it, and a lot of people are saying this, is, is the lack of parenting is we are not giving our youth a good example of what it is like yeah. uh, to be responsible yeah. individuals. Go out there yeah. and make a better future for yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. But on the other hand, when the youth look at the issues that are facing them, from drugs to alcohol abuse to uh, massive unemployment, mm -hmm. and this ticking time bomb that has so been described about our youth. Yeah. How do we get around these issues? Look, I mean, uh, there's there's an, uh, a saying which uh, uh, you know the Kenyan used after their liberation, uh, which was Uhuru Nakaz, which means freedom and work. And I think that where you know part of the message which will continue to send, which we sent yesterday, is that we have to take responsibility for our actions. We have to, uh, you know, we cannot always shift the blame to other people. We uh, also have to deal with the culture of, uh, you know, entitlement. Yes, uh, you know, uh, government will, uh, you know, do its best to ensure that we uh, end poverty, unemployment, inequality. But I think that, uh, you know, we've got to be taken, uh, you know, uh, halfway. Uh, you know, I even met an example about, uh, uh, you know, this man who went to church who was praying week in and week out to God to help him win the lottery. And, you know, at some point a voice came to him, you know, that said to him, look, you've got to meet me halfway, at least buy the lottery ticket. So yeah. we can put certain things in place. But, uh, you know, if young people are not taking advantage of those, I don't think that we're going to go anywhere. And I think the, the context around, uh, uh, you know, uh, parenting, uh, obviously we, we're not promoting, uh, you know, abuse of children through corporal punishment and all of that. But we think that, uh, you know, uh, it, it is important that parents take responsibility for the education of their children. It is important that, uh, you know, uh, as it happened in the past, where it is not about whether someone is your biological uh, mother or father, but a senior person who see a child roaming the street 
uh, during school uh, uh, hours must ensure that their child goes to school. And I think that if we can start with those basics, we can actually go a long way in dealing with a whole range of, uh, you know, uh, mm. other socio-economic problems. You touched on a massive word, a word that everybody is speaking about, and that is entitlement. Yeah. How do we get away from the culture of entitlement within South Africans and within particularly the youth of South Africa? Because now, I mean, that's your, your, your yeah. domain of expertise. Yeah. Uh, because it is a sense of, all right, I'm going to sit here and, I, and I'm yeah. going to wait for my free home. I'm yeah. going to wait for my... Uh, my, my free education, yeah. I'm going to wait for my free this, my free that. Yeah. I'm not going to go out there and work for it. Yeah. How do we get this back into the youth yeah. of this country? Look, I mean, I think the, the, uh, the damage that was created by the apartheid system will obviously take us a long way to, uh, you know, to, to reverse. And we've got to, uh, we, we do not have to, uh, you know, give up. But I think importantly, uh, you know, post-1994, uh, what government did was, I think, to overcompensate for the historical injustices. Mm. I mean, there's no government in the world that is building houses for, for, for uh, you know, its own people. People go out there and build their own houses. Uh, people get encouraged to, uh, you know, pay their own universities and all of, uh, fees and all of that. But, uh, you know, our government, because of the, uh, you know, huge program of redress, uh, you know, had to put in place all of those measures and somewhat created, uh, you know, this culture of entitlement. But we think that perhaps over promising. Oh. Well, uh, I, I think sometimes even those uh, promises and commitments were made. But and, and that's why I said earlier on that you know the Kenyan sayings, which I think uh, Mandela actually repeated when he was accepting uh, his presidency, when he said, "Yes, we now have freedom, but let's go and work for for our bread, for our shelter, and for our uh, salt." And I think it is uh, what we are trying to do through the national youth policy process, where we're saying. Uh, yes, government will make commitments on what it should do for the next five years, but we want young people to get involved, to get into action, uh, you know, and all of that. And as I always say, that the majority of young people actually out there, you know, are not looking for a handout. They don't want to be on social grants queues and all of that. What they want is a hand up, mm -hmm. you know, a, an opportunity for them to, I mean, f uh, uh, I mean, for opportunities to be open for them and for them to take advantage of those opportunities. And that's that's what we believe will, uh, you know, reverse this uh, uh, mentality of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, entitlement. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting there at home and hoping that things will change, nothing will change, nothing will come to those, uh, you know, who want to lazy around. Yeah. And we, we think that, uh, you know, we can all move this country forward if we all get involved. Let's touch on this issue uh, before we take a break. Let, let's touch on the issue of universities. I want to move away from yep. the Soweto writing for yep. now, the looting, I beg your pardon, and talk about universities. I mean, last week we also had disgruntled student organizations. You're very much so, I'm sure, yep. aware of the situation of bursaries and funding for students that yep. cannot afford it. And if they are not entirely funded, they're threatening to burn down universities yeah. again here is another issue um if we don't get our way we're going to resort to violence yeah how do we get rid of this how Look do we up, get this out of our youth yeah i think it's important that we we um promote a, a culture of engagement a culture of you know re resolving issues through uh, you know discussions and discourse we have to obviously appreciate that uh, you know over the last uh, five six years uh, the uh, government through uh, the department of higher education and training has actually more than uh, you know tripled the national student financial aid scheme uh, uh, you know uh, budget uh, from about uh, two billion now to about 9.5 billion, which is a huge uh, leap. Uh, and of course, it will still not cover, uh, you know, the majority of the students who demand, uh, you know, uh, and who are deserving, uh, uh, you know, of education. But we have to say to, uh, you know, uh, young people out there, particularly students, that to thrash campuses, to ban cars, uh, you know, to uh, intimidate other students, uh, to threaten violence, will not take us anywhere. In fact, we're destroying the very same property that we should be using for, uh, you know, our own uh, uh, education. But I think also more importantly, let's look at other avenues. University education is not the end of, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not the be it all of uh, our education system. And I think the mentality, which is uh, extremely dangerous, that, you know, for one to be, uh, to have a, a decent job 
being characterized by you know a tie, uh, you know a desk and office and all of that. I think we really need to uh, you know deal uh, yeah. deal with that and look at various other uh, avenues that government has created. All right, Buti Manamela, thank you very much for talking to us. In fact, I'm just going to ask you to stay for. We're going to take a quick ad break and we'll okay. wrap it up after this. We'll just okay. give you a, a final voice on this issue. Uh, let's take a break. Quarter to eight here on Morning Life.